It's 43 years since Tony Collette got involved in greyhound racing, so how did his life in dogs begin? Same as everyone really, just as a, a kennel ant and uh, various trainers and uh, just took it from, from that stage to be quite honest with you. So it's never something your family were involved in, that's often no, the No, 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 not at all. Uh, my, my uncle was very much so. Uh, he, uh, we used to, he used to sneak me out and everything. Uh, when the parents or the aunts used to go off to bingo or something, we used to get on that bus down to White City Dogs there and everything and get back before they got back. But no, uh, just for some reason or other, I've loved it from, you know, from day one, you know. And next door to your racing block, you also have your partner, Cheryl, who runs a branch of the Retired Greyhound Trust here, which is quite handy for you in some ways. <laughs> oh, I'd like to wish it was, <laughs> to be honest with you. I've still got to go on the list. But nice for you personally in the sense that you work next door to your partner and, and have the similar interest, of course, in the Yeah, greyhounds. definitely so, definitely so. And uh, it's nice, uh, it's even nice really if you could go and, and watch the TV without the phone going about dogs and everything. But that's Cheryl's side of it. She's taking phone calls from all sorts of people, really. It's like 24-7 with her, really. So, uh, no, it is good, really, to be honest with you. And it is, of course, as everybody says, it's a way of life, not just a job. Is it a life that you've enjoyed? Oh, you'd be daft to say. You, 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 Anyone what does this for the hours, everyone, you've got to enjoy it. You don't, you know, you just leave and go somewhere else. Go and get another job elsewhere. I think that's the problem that we sort of got now. Is it's so hard to get dedicated staff. You know, uh, our average age of staff here is 60. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, they love their dogs. Yeah. How's life at Central Park? Yeah, I'm enjoying it uh, a lot more now. Barry Stanton's gone there as a consultant and it does seem a good move. Constantly under pressure about contracts and everything, if you get that there and everything. But we've got a full kennel here now. I'm enjoying it. I look forward to having young dogs in, try and bring them through the grades there and everything. Uh, you get a bit of a buzz out of it. I am enjoying it. You've had some wonderful dogs in these kennels. Who would be the best of them, would you say? Went through a terrific year, you know. Everything fell into place, really. The dogs were here at the right time. I would have to say Lenson Joker, really. Uh, Lenson Express was a great dog. Even Lenson Earl, you know, a lot of characters in the dogs. Um, the Joker probably would be, probably I'd have to say the best, really. Because, like, at one time, he'd just come in the age of two, he didn't look like he was going to be really doing anything, What you know, what he... Well, no one would know he'd turn out to be what he was, to be quite honest with you, but we thought he'd be at least an open racer, and I think he'd just mine out of class. Um, but then all of a sudden he just clicked, uh, and uh, well, that's history now, isn't it? Eh? But everyone in the industry sort of bought into him as well. He was a character on and off the track, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He had a toe-off at Romford, and I think that was in the semi-final of the Essex Vars, I think that one was. Dog never looked back since he came back from having the toe off, to be honest with you. Uh, he just progressed on further and further. Um, no, um, he was a great dog, and then we had the night at Sunderland uh, when they uh, when Express won as well. It's track four, Bauer Keen, the local hope for Kelly McCurry leading, but Lenson Express comes shooting up into second place, and there comes two Drupi Sheehy that come round the final bend, Bauer Keen. Now all out as Lenson Express is piling on the pressure on the inside. It's Lenson Express winning, and winning well in the end by a good two and a half length. They come past the stands, and Lenson Joker has now hit the front. Romeo Turbo and Blond Buzz back in second and third half. These comes three, Kulavani Pius. I can tell you, uh, Bubbly Totty's making up a little bit of ground on the inside of that runner, and towards the rear is Westmead Tina, but it's Lenson Joker, fresh after that Cesarowicz winner, is going to post up another big win here. It's Lenson Joker, a real king of the stayers at the moment. Probably one of the lucky ones, really, that having a dog like him, everyone, you know, are wishing you well and everything like that. But, uh, no, um, they were good times, they were. What's been your best moment, if you had to pick one single moment? Obviously, you made the Derby final with Lens and Express. Would, would that be it, or, or something else? Um, we're yet to experience what it's going to be like at Toaster, but... I was lucky enough, I didn't pray King Craig Rory in the final there, because we had a lad that was taken in, we're sort of superstitious in the sense that whoever prayed, take him all the way. 
Um, but the two finals I was in, um, Wingate Java and then Ten Express, is such a buzz when you're in the middle of that track and the and the crowd start and that the Wingate Java that was both sides of the track and it was such a, a buzz being there and everything. So um, no, uh, I would say I would say that, and I've got to say that Sunderland would have to come close second to be quite honest with you, uh, and that's because we won it really. But um, no, no, that, that they would be, if I'm allowed to say two, they would be the two things. Your dogs look in amazing condition, and every time I've come down here over the years, they always do. What is it? What, why is that? Why do your dogs look look so good? Staff. If you've got the right staff, there's no reason why the dogs can't. You know, it's my responsibility to make sure they get fed properly, they, uh, the bedding, uh, they get the right exercise. But you can't do it without good staff. And I get the impression from you that if you didn't have that, you wouldn't do it. You'd no, do it the no right way. way or no way. No, no, definitely not. I'd have to pack up because I don't want to be embarrassed going to a track now with a dog looking not 100% or anything like that. And the only way you can do it is having staff. Uh, and it's stupid saying people can do it by themselves and everything like that. You, you need that bit of help and you've got to own up and be honest about it. So having good staff, you know, is the reason why these dogs look so well. Obviously the sport's changing in a number of ways, but do you feel positive about the future? I was already disillusioned a couple of years ago, I must admit that, but I try not to comment about it anymore now, to be honest with you, I've sort of given up on that side. We try to run our kennel and keep positive, pay the wages, pay the bills, and just progress on from there, to be honest with you. Um, it's, uh, it is an industry what they need, really need seriously looking at. Um, but that's as much I'd like to say about it, to be honest with you. And in the meantime, what's your kind of, what drives you? What keeps you going? Well, the dogs, really and truly. Uh, I can't imagine being retired and not doing uh, being part of getting up in the morning there or doing the dogs or whatever. I dread the day I've got to go out that back garden and start doing plants and everything <laughs> like that. So I think I'll stick it to the dogs.